Hello everyone and welcome back to Source Coder Hub. In this tutorial, we're going to set up Redux in our web application. In our last video, we left off with this diagram visualizing how Redux works overall. But in this video, we're going to take a deeper look at the store and understand the slice, state, the reducer, and actions to see how these work together to manage the global state. Let's start with the documentation. So let's head on over to redux.org and we're going to use Redux Toolkit. So scroll down and click Redux Toolkit. And what makes Redux a great tool? It's simple. The Redux store reducer and actions are centralized in one location, so it's easy to manage and update data. It's opinionated, which means that you're working within structured built-in defaults, so it delivers a consistent code base. And because of its powerful Emmer library, you can quote unquote modify state, something you normally can't do directly in JavaScript, and you can see updates immediately to your application. And it's effective because with Redux, you can do more with less code. And we're going to see how these things play out when we actually build an application. So scroll back up and click get started and quick start. So the first step, according to the documentation is to install Redux toolkit and react Redux. And to do that, we're going to use this line of code. So let's copy that head back over to Visual Studio Code, and we're going to install it. And now we see that that's been installed. Let's head back over to the documentation. And now we're going to create a Redux store. Now I'm gonna be making reference to the three minute intro Redux video where I use a department store to explain how a Redux web application works. And there's a card in the upper right corner if you want to check that out. This is a code that allows us to do that. So we're gonna copy this code. We're gonna head back over to Visual Studio Code and let's close this out. And we're gonna create, inside of the source folder, we're gonna create a folder that we're gonna name store. And inside the store folder, we're gonna create a file that we're going to name store.js. And in that file, we're going to paste what we just copied from the documentation. Later, we're going to come back here and we're going to add the slice reducer. So for now, let's save that. So our third step is to provide the Redux store to React. Let's save this first. So we're going to head back over to the documentation. And we're going to provide the Redux store to React. In other words, we provide each component access to the Redux store. That would be like providing shops in a department store direct access to the warehouse. So let's incorporate this code into our application. So let's go to source, the source folder, and open up main.jsx, which is the same as the index.js in the documentation. And we're going to import store from store. We're also going to import the provider from React Redux. And we're going to use it here, the provider. And we're going to wrap our app with the provider and pass store to the provider. And since the app holds all the components, they gain access to the Redux store through the provider. So let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to move to our next step, which is to create a Redux state slice. Now a slice is like one of the departments in a huge department store. It's like a clothing department or a furniture department. The slice handles all things related to the component. And in this example, we're looking at the counter slice. The concerns of the counter slice can be divided into two parts. The first part is the state and it has the name counter. And the initial count is zero because there are no counts when the application is initially built. 
So it's like a newly built department store and the status of the inventory of clothing in the department would be zero because there is no merchandise initially. Now the second concern of the counter slice is the actions. The actions are performed to update the state. All actions are submitted through the reducer. In our illustration of the department store, you'll recall that the reducer was like the online order form submitted to update merchandise in each shop. And the actions were like store workers who processed the request to update merchandise. There are three actions here that can be taken to update the status of the counter state. And in this case, the actions are increment, decrement, or increment by number. And at the bottom, we need to export the actions as well as the reducer slice so that it's accessible to the components. And this is what this last piece of code does. So let's go over to the application. And here we're going to create a folder for our slices with the name features. So in the source folder, we're going to right click and create a new folder called features. And inside the features, we're going to create another folder that we're going to name posts. And let's just head back over to the counter slice. We're going to copy this code. We're going to go back over to Visual Studio Code. Inside the post folder, we're going to create another file and we're going to name this Post slice. Oops. Post slice.js. And we're going to go back over to our documentation. We're going to grab that counter slice. Oops. Copy it and we're going to head back over to Visual Studio Code and we're going to paste that code. And we're going to update this code and adjust it for our post slice. So we're going to go through and where we see counter slice, we're going to change it and it's going to be called post slice. And instead of naming the state counter, we're going to name it post. And here it's a post slice and a post slice. Okay. So let's go back to the top and our state for post for the counter it was values but our state is going to be entries so we're going to have several post entries and it's going to be an array of posts okay so the initial value is zero and instead of incrementing our post entries we're going to create posts which is going to have an initial state as well as actions. And we're going to here remove post. It's going to have a state as well as actions. And instead of incrementing, we're going to update. Okay. And we're not going to use this logic. This only, this referred to the counter. And this text here is interesting. Redux Toolkit allows us to write mutating logic in the reducer. Now, what does it mean mutating? Well, putting it bluntly, the Ember library puts guardrails in place in our Redux store to prevent us from writing logic that may accidentally break our code base. Ember keeps an original copy of state, the initial state, here and makes a temporary copy of the initial state and allow us to mutate the temporary copy. And once you're done, Emma reviews your code logic and safely applies those updates to the original state. So we're going to remove this because again, we're going to apply our own logic. And the other thing that we need to do is update the actions because we're going to be exporting the create action, the remove action, as well as the update action. 
now that we have our post slice, we can go back over to the store. We can add the post slice reducer to our store. So we're going to name this post and we're going to import post slice, but we want to make it clear that it's the reducer that we want from the post slice. So it is post slice, but it's the reducer part. So we're going to just make that clear by changing the name and we can save that. So let's close all of these folders. And one question that came that came to my mind when I was learning Redux is why is this folder called features and not slices? Well, let me start by saying that it's fine to call it slices. In the documentation, the idea is that inside this features folder, you would create separate folders for all the main features of your website. So the post folder would include not just the post slice, but also post the post component, the CSS file for the post components, as well as any other logic and files related to post. Now let's just say there was logic related to members. Then inside the features folder, there would be a members folder. And inside that folder, there would be a member slice, the members component, the CSS files for the member component. And then there would be any other logic and files related to members. And the thought is that this architecture would make it easier to maintain the application as it scales. And just to reiterate so it's not confusing, in our web application, our post slice handles all things related to post. This includes state, the current status of entries, as well as the reducer, which processes and manages actions in order to update state or entries. So what's the goal of all of this entire Redux process? It is to manage and update data in state and share data to our component. Ultimately, users experience the most up-to-date data in the user interface. In the next video, we're going to build the component. Before we move on, I want to send out a huge thank you to our 24 subscribers, three of whom also subscribed to the newsletter and completed the survey. The results are in, and what is the top request? Not surprisingly, these React Redux tutorials. So I will complete this series first and then take a look at the survey in a couple of months to determine my next series. If you found value in this tutorial so far, don't forget to like and share this video. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button. If you want to be the first to know, connect to the hub source coder hubs newsletter together we share knowledge code and community thank you for joining me and i'll see you in the next video